Hey, how you doing? My name is Ryan, and today I'm designing, printing, and building my very own custom LEGO Fantastic Four minifigures. Now, this is a video that's been in the works for a couple of months. I was originally using the Mr. Fantastic costume from Multiverse of Madness as my base. I even bought this Ben Grimm big fig off of Etsy, and I was going to remove the face and apply a new one with water decals, but then the official poster dropped, and the aesthetic was way different than any of us were expecting. Gone were the highly intricate designs, gone were the somewhat overly textured suits, and here was this comfy, cozy, retro 1960s look. And even though only Reed and Sue are in their official costumes, Ben and Johnny both are in similar looking 1960s outfits, so it feels cohesive, it feels like a family. So instead of extrapolating everyone's hero look, I'm going to use these costumes for my Fantastic Four minifigures. And let's start with the easier ones, Reed and Sue. Both of them are showcasing what looks like the team suit and they're in full on the poster, with nothing being obstructed. And it kind of feels like a mix between the spandex suits from the Roger Corman Fantastic Four film and a knitted striped sweater. So for Reed, I'll start by blocking out the main elements like the collar, which is made up of two ovals, followed by adding a bunch of vertical lines for this detail patterning on the neckline and the chest. Now the lines aren't all perfect 90 degree angles, but rather they follow the curve of the torso, but I have to be mindful to make sure these lines are somewhat equally spaced out. Next, I'm working on the belt, which at first I think is a segmented light gray rectangle. I'll add some minimal detail lines and circles here as the reference image looks pretty sparse in design. And the last thing to lock down is the logo, with a vintage flare and white accent lines within the number 4. And I'll pause here for a second, because on first glance, this doesn't look that good. Everything is flat and minimalist. But the next step will make all these elements pop, as it's time to add highlights and shadows. Starting with the logo, I'm adding a drop shadow and an inner shadow within these darker circles to separate the layers visually. Then I'll lighten the accent lines on the torso from dark blue to blue, so I can use that darker color for shadow lines. Then I'll add these to the ovals that block out the main shapes of the torso. And moving down to the belt, I decided to use light gray as the base color, white as the highlights, and dark gray for the shadows. This three-tone approach will make each segment pop on the belt, giving it a ton of dimension. And now the torso design is finished and much more effective than before. Now usually I'll pull a bunch of pre-existing pieces for the rest of the figure, but this being the Fantastic Four, I want to do a little bit more. Starting with the face, that's pretty easy, Lego already has made a Pedro Pascal head in the Mandalorian. The hair, I was going to use the Doctor Strange hair with the salt and pepper, but I also have a version of that piece in dark brown from an off-brand figure. The black could work if you don't already have this custom Reed Richards figure, but the dark brown I think looks a little bit better. Now for the arms and legs, I could just go with medium blue to match the torso, but Reed Richards is stretchy, and I do want to showcase some of the powers in these Fantastic Four figures. So there does exist extra long arms and legs in blue, they come from Avatar. So I'll take this Navi figure, remove the print from the legs using a Q-tip and some nail polish remover, and paint on Reed's white boots. And I think I'll use a similar approach of showcasing the powers for the rest of the first family. So let's move on to Sue Storm. Thankfully, there are only three tweaks to make to transform my Reed design into Sue. First, I need to adjust the collar colors from blue to white, and by extension, the accent lines from blue to gray. Then, the chest needs two accent lines, and finally, the bottom of the torso needs two dark ovals to add the curves LEGO often has on female characters. With the torso done, on to the rest of the figure. For the face, I think I'll use Harry Potter's Flora Decalore, as I really like this confident smirk. The hair, I'll pick this long swooping hair in bright light yellow. It's a common piece on several figures. On to the arms and legs, where I'm gonna mix things up a little bit. I want Sue Storm to be partially invisible, like she's entering her powered state. So I'm going to have one arm and one leg be transparent, and one leg and one arm be visible. For the visible leg, I'm going for the leg print on Queer Eyes and Tony Porosky, 
and erase the excess printing with a Q-tip and nail polish remover. I'm left with a blue leg and white boot print that matches perfectly the color of the torso. And for the invisible limbs, I don't have a ton of options as there are only so few pieces in transparent blue. For the arms, I think I'll go with Marvel's Electro, the comic version. But for the legs, I'm gonna pick the bear guitarist from the short-lived video line. I'll pop one leg off and one arm off and combine all the pieces together. I'll also throw in a clear clip and blue shield to give her that force field power that she often has in the comics. Now, on to Johnny Storm, a harder figure for sure, as a lot of his outfit is covered up by this chair. I looked up a lot of outfits from the 1960s to try to find an equivalent. There are several blue suits and jackets to pick from, and I think this looks more like a white undershirt with a blue jacket sweater over top and light blue lapels. So I'll start with the neckline, lapels, and undershirt details at the top. Then I'll add my shading to give the layers some dimension. Wrinkles will go towards the bottom as will the waistband. Now I'm gonna add an artistic choice that might be wrong but I think has to be on this figure for this series to work, and that's the logo. You could say it's covered up by the chair, or it might not be there at all, but I really think it'd be odd to have a set of Fantastic Four minifigures where they don't all have the logo on them somewhere. And if this idea doesn't work for you, you could always just print another copy of Reed's torso for Johnny Storm. And for the rest of the figure, the head will come from Antoni Porosky, the hair is this common piece in brown, the legs can either be these plain legs in Dark Azure, or to show Johnny mid flame on transformation, this ghost piece in translucent orange. And as you've seen in this video so far, I like when these characters are showing their powers, so that's my pick for his legs, I want him to fly. And for the arms, I'm doing a similar gimmick to Sue, where one's normal and one's powered up. The Ninjago Dragon Power Kai figure has some wonderful arms in translucent orange, so that and a fireball completes this Human Torch minifigure. And finally, there's Ben Grimm, who in the poster is wearing a striped athletic looking sweater and jeans. That outfit was far more consequential than I realized. You see, at first I was going to make a custom big fig of the thing to match the scale of the Hulk, but now that he's wearing an outfit, I have two choices. I can either hand paint the outfit on the big fig, which I'm not that great of a painter, or go the route of a custom minifigure. And thankfully, there is some precedent for large Rocky characters being portrayed as minifigures in the Marvel Pantheon, that being Korg. Will LEGO choose to make the thing a big fig? Probably, but mine's going to be a custom minifigure to match the aesthetic of the rest of the first family. I'll start by creating the center stripe of the sweater in white, followed by the middle seam and the collars, which honestly took a while to get right as I experimented with different shapes and different colored shadows but the buttons, wrinkles, and eventual team logo help unify the look with the rest of the team and make this Ben Grimm torso look really nice. Then it was time to design the face, which took inspiration from Big Kid Brick's rendition of the character and Korg. I started with the smile and added teeth, a dividing line, and a slight slant to the overall mouth to give Ben more of a smirk than a grin. The eyebrows were two large open oval shapes and the cheek lines were bold and pronounced. And of course, the entire face was accented with this rock vector pattern to complete the ensemble. Although I did remove the pattern from the eyebrows for added visibility and clarity. The legs for the figure would come from the CMF cardboard robot figure, which has dual molded legs and orange boots. Just remove the print with the Q-tip and nail polish remover and it's perfect for my thing minifigure. And while these figures look nice, they're kind of missing something. A certain highly engineered robot built for interdimensional exploration. Or Herbie for short. After tackling the four characters, this was one of the easier custom designs to make. The shapes on the robot are rather pronounced and simple, so the design translated well. The only issues would be in scaling, as the head would have to be on a 1x2 tile and the body on a 2x2 tile. The build was a much tougher challenge, as I had to balance getting the shapes of Herbie right while not being so big that it overshadows or even equals the size of a minifigure. It was one of those builds where every piece counted. And after only 19 parts, I think Herbie turned out rather well. Iconic, but still small enough to go next to any of Marvel's first family. Add the custom pieces, and I think it looks really good. 
And with my figures completed, it's time to get feedback on my designs. And this being the Fantastic Four, I, you know, I put a bit of extra effort in on the actual process of making these figures. I want to go above and beyond with the feedback too. So I'm really excited to have popular LEGO YouTuber Republic Studs with me today for his live reaction to these custom Fantastic Four minifigures. So Logan, thank you so much for being with me today to review my Fantastic Four minifigures. Great, uh, I'm excited to get into it. I hope they're fantastic. I hope you think they're fantastic. We'll start off with the main man himself, Mr. Fantastic. Oh my goodness, that looks great. Look at that. It's Pedro Pascal. It looks like the legs are painted. The legs are painted. I had to remove the print off of them and then white, uh, actually add the white boot print myself. Neat. It's funny, for him I always picture they do like a Mrs. Incredible type thing, but this looks great. It's funny you mention that when I first started conceiving this figure, I was going to actually paint those long arms blue. I think I was going to use Miss Marvel or as you said, Miss Incredible, but yeah, I came across the Navi arms. I thought that'd be a good way to obviously minimize the amount of painting required for this figure and maximize the effect of him being stretchy. It looks really solid. I really like it. Let's move on to figure number two. This is the Invisible Woman. Okay, so is this Fig Barf? Can you explain to the audience what that is? Okay, Fig Barf is when you kind of barf out a minifig, you take all the pieces in your leg of minifigure and you barf it out. I'm pretty sure it's an acronym for something. It's a similar idea. I wanted to have her be sort of partly invisible, partly visible. Tommy C. Bricks was showing me a Force Ghost he made recently, and it looks... He was trying to do something like that with the legs. What did Tommy use for his Force Ghost? So you know the new Vision minifigure? Yeah, and yeah. So what he did was he made it kind of half printed and then he had the legs kind of clear and then he used a light in the back of him uh, to like illuminate the back of the figure because the, his point was that most Force Ghosts, you kind of see the full guy and they just have the blur, the, the blue blur behind them. Yeah. So he tried to recreate that just by kind of pressing a light and then it kind of went through them with the feet. Remember that leak that was a while ago? I think it was it was a fake image, if you remember. That was why he made the. That was how he made them. The sh the, the clamshell that was gonna go around the figures. I thought that was a pretty smart idea for Force Ghosts, but I guess we'll never actually get a Force Ghost figure. I actually interviewed that guy. The reason he was able to do that leak is because he designed like car parts, and he explains that I did a oh. podcast episode with him, and his profession is car parts. So he uses all those online, what do you call them, programs. Uh, to design things, so he was able to design all these super hyper realistic looking Lego minifigure parts, and that like fascinated me. That's fantastic. That's, that's a good way to think about it. He's basically a three D designer. <laughs> Moving on to the Human Torch. Oh shoot! It is, look at that. I wanted this figure to be mid flight because I I like when the figures showcase their powers. No, oh, that looks good. I like it. it looks solid. And on to the thing. Uh, this was a very fascinating challenge because. <laughs> What scale do you make him? Do you make him a big fig? Do you make him a mini fig? All right. Look at that. That looks very nice. It's hard because he's a big guy. So I'm going to go through analysis here for a second. So are is that like the robot legs from the collectible minifigure series guy? Yep, that's the robot that's a, legs. It's a very creative use of that. I would have never put that together in a million years. And I do like how the face very much resembles Korg. Like, they look like they could, like, go with each other. Like, if you had the Korg headpiece, I know it doesn't work for him because he's a round head, but that, I feel like it would look cool. Like, Korg in orange. I actually have one more character to show you today. All right. Because I couldn't, I couldn't do the Fantastic Four without this specific character. I don't know who that is. I'll be truthful. <laughs> No, that's okay. It's honestly, a lot of people won't know who this character is because it's such a weird throwback from the 60s. So the fact that they're bringing this character, it's a, a small robot character on the poster uh, with a custom face plate in a two by one tile and a custom body on a two by two tile. Let's go. They look great together. Let's go. You can like edit that into a poster. The good news is I was able to insert my Fantastic Four figures into the original poster, it just took a really long time to do so. I underestimated how difficult it would be to paint out the original Fantastic Four from the poster to make room for my custom LEGO minifigures. I also had to add a bit of a sketch filter to make sure my custom creations felt cohesive in the more sketch art style of the original poster. But after about two hours later, the LEGO Fantastic Four poster was complete. 
Alright, so now that you've seen both the poster, the original source material I'm pulling from for these characters, and the figures themselves, you know, I'm not just about inflating my ego as a designer, I like to improve my design, so what do you think I can do to improve my approach to these characters and my figure designs in general? Okay, so I personally, I would have done the thing much bigger, um, just because he is so much sizably different than the other guy, so I, I, I would have tried to use, like, either, I don't know if it would be tall legs or something, I would have tried to experiment with something. I like the armor piece, like, on Wrecker. Like, maybe if you painted Ooh. that a certain color, a I think idea. that could be cool. Uh, just because I don't feel like you're portraying him, like, as, as like, I love the face. The face is good. Um, but I feel like you'd portray him better in the torso area. Like, uh, if you look at the Wrecker minifigure, actually, he had the same torso as Hunter, so, like, a very generic torso, until you put the armor over him, and then he's much more distinguished. Um, so I do that. Mm. Uh, other than that, they look great. I, I like all of them. I wonder if maybe like almost a, a micro build would have worked better here in using tile pieces as the print as opposed to trying to find some sort of one custom piece. Who's the mud guy that they made for the Lego Batman movie? The, the mud, mud monster. Uh, I need to look oh, it Clayface. up. Oh, Clayface. Clayface. But like, what if you made it so that way you have like the thing is the set and then the rest of the figures are like figures. Like kind of what they did with Sandman for Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be a great, like, you know those minifigure packs they do? Like with Star yes, Wars? Yes, I agree, yeah. The accessory packs. And then packs. you make the thing like a little build, and then you have all the figures as the add-ons. And they did six figures for um the, the Thor one. Yes. So, like, you could get away with it easily. Marvel would definitely. Look, if we're being honest, they're going to make multiple sets. They're going to put one of the, fi of the main characters in each set. Make you buy all of them to have all the Fantastic Four. I, I imagine the thing's going to be a big fig when they make it for real. Maybe I, what if I did a, a build with the newer big fig head? So it's a larger head. Yes. Same design, just scale it up. That might be he, a move. He would look great on the big pig head. Well, I am very happy with how these Fantastic Four figures and builds turned out. It was quite a process to piece these together, but I think in the end, it was worth it. And of course, big thanks to Logan from Republic Studs for giving me his honest thoughts on these figures. Subscribe. Like, it, like me, I subscribed. You guys should subscribe too. And if you like the way these turned out, you can download your own copy of the artwork and have your own Fantastic Four figures printed at minifigs.me by using the link in the description box down below and typing in the password, hey hey. No spaces, all lowercase. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.